Welcome to Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous with your host, Nikki Backerl D'Angelo. In today's show, we're going to go through my impressions of Invictus Week, having spent the last two days there, and we're going to talk a little bit about something very special. Hello everyone, it's Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo, and today I'm super excited because I have an announcement. I really am back. Yeah, there's no more excuses, no more walking away from it, no more long breaks unless I die. I mean, but that won't happen, knock wood, right? I have spent the better part of the last couple of months putting my studio back together again, and it's just a little bit longer before my work computer gets pulled out of here as we start going back to stores full time. So I am 100% back and I am ready to take on Star Citizen to start delivering you the content that I've promised you for so long. And today, well, we're going to have some fun. We're going to go to the venue, see what's going on with Aegis over at the Invictus Week. And then we're going to go on the Javelin. Really? We're going to go on the javelin. It's not going to be what you expect. You can't go everywhere. You go to an anemic portion of the ship, but still we get to go on the javelin. So as you enter the hall for Invictus Week, here we are in New Babbage and we are at the, I guess you could call it a Coliseum or a convention hall. In Atlanta, it would be like the World Congress Center and they have all the ships here. I still think the hall is way too big for the number of ships that they're able to put here at this time. So when we're looking at this, we're looking at a place that's going to be filled with a lot more people, a lot more booths, a lot more things to do in the future as graphics get optimized and the game gets updated to handle a lot more objects streaming in and out at once. But for me... Invictus Week isn't that wow, and it's because I've been covering the game for a very long time. So when you think about it, you come here expecting your mind to be blown, and there's nothing ever here that you haven't seen before. Except for today, because today we have the Redeemer. Oh my lord. I've been waiting for this ship for a very long time. I did own it before. Yes, I did. I melted mine. I, I have to admit it. The Perseus was too good to pass up but I may never see that ship again but I could buy this one back or earn enough money in the game to buy it but for me the Redeemer had almost everything that I wanted in the ship and it was in the beginning part gunship part dropship and it really was trying to be both and trying to be neither and CIG has made it a gunship I am so excited for those of you that have bought the Nova tank, I'll be your wingman. I'll be your fac. I'll be your personal protector from the skies above. I will keep everything off your back. I promise because I will fly one of these into the landing zone or into the drop zone, protect the troops that are coming off of the prowlers and then go and do forward air support, close air support, whatever they're going to call it in the game. I can't wait. This, this, is the biggest wow to me from Invictus so far. Being able to see this in its beauty, even though I can't go inside of it, I love it. But outside of this, outside of this gorgeous ship, we've seen it all before. The Saber, the Hammerhead, the Avenger, the Eclipse, the Re... I, can't, I keep on trying to say Reclaimer, but obviously it's a Retaliator. Redeemer, Retaliator, Reclaimer... Come on, CIG. Try to think of better names. Well, they're actually all pretty good. But I mean, we've seen it. Even the lightning. Even the lightning, which is here, we've seen before. And that's not a negative thing, because I'll go see the Blue Angels every time they come to Atlanta. I'll go see the Thunderbirds every time they come to Atlanta. And I'll go, I'll go to countless numbers of these different air shows. 
seeing the same thing over and over again because it's a wow. Invictus Week has wow elements in it, but it doesn't have that true feeling of a con, that true feeling of an expo, that true feeling of an air show. And it is because CIG does, they just don't have the systems in place to turn it into a huge event. So assumption has to be worked out where it works all the time. And then you need a lot more work done on the graphics engine so you can have a lot more objects in one place at one time and a lot more people. This should feel packed. If there aren't a thousand people here, there should be a thousand NPCs here. This thing should feel like I'm not the only person on the planet. And that's what I feel every time I go to one of these things. Even when I go with my friends, it still feels very empty, very silent, very blah. And although I love coming to these things in, in, in Star Citizen, they sometimes just leave me going, yeah, that was uh, an hour of my life. It was cool. I wish they made it outside or something so I could have seen it while I was going to my ship. And that was it. But I don't want to sound negative about it because I know the future, the future of these events are going to be much, much more interesting. Oh, there's another amazing ship. It's the Batplane. Well, the Eclipse. I had to have that because how could Batgirl not have the Batplane? It is beautiful. Well, there's really not a lot here for the person that's been around as long as I have since 2013. But there are a couple of things that give us an idea of how progress is coming along with certain ships. And that would be in the hall down below. So during the last few days, I sat down in this hall, oogling at my Polaris and my Perseus. But today we're here for a different reason. A ship that only a true fuel rat could call their own. Yes, I called you guys out because you're amazing. You helped me so many times in my early days in Elite Dangerous. The Vulcan is your repair, rearm, refuel ship, and it is there to refuel your quantum fuel should you get stranded somewhere. So the fuel rats hopefully will be in Star Citizen. It's going to be amazing. So I come here, read the placards, stare at the designs, and I'm not going to just stare at them here. I want you to come see it. I don't want you to rely on me. Because each time that you come to these, there are subtle differences. And you can see how the progress is coming along on releasing these ships. And I think that's awesome. I can't wait until the Vulcan is in the game because I have needed it quite a few times when I jump out into the middle of nowhere without checking my quantum fuel. So I'm hoping the fuel rats do make it over to Star Citizen. The other ship over here is just waiting on a couple of systems. Now, we don't know what mine sweeping is going to be like or mine laying or what they're going to do or how effective they're going to be right now. So to release the ship today would just be like releasing the Reclaimer so long ago without having salvaging in the game. It just turns into an oversized cargo ship that can't carry as much cargo as you want it to for its size. But nonetheless, Reclaimer is still a great ship. Nautilus doesn't need to be in the game yet until those things are worked out, but it is awesome. And it looks nothing like the Nautilus I've been flying on for the last couple of weeks. Yes, I've been playing Mass Effect again, and it rocks. So outside of the hall is the true main event. The true main event because we get to see two things that we haven't seen before. Oh yeah, don't tell me you've seen the Javelin before because it's not the way that I'm talking about. So me, I'm, I'm here because of Squadron 42. Now, I, I do love Star Citizen, and it's going to be my game of choice forever. And to me, I just look at it as that prize I found in the bottom of the Cracker Jack box that didn't turn out to be a pile of poo, but actually was a real diamond. So that's what Star Citizen is going to be to me. But Squadron 42... Oh my lord, that is what I'm waiting for. I want to see Chris Roberts' true space opera. I want to play through one of his games. And the flagship in that game eventually is this. The Bengal Carrier. Now, I'm not going to fly all around it, try to land on it, and try to show things off. Because honestly, 
I think it's like an older TV. You want to stay further away from it to soak in the true beauty of it because as you get closer to it, the graphical fidelity is just not there yet because this is just an empty shell, kind of like the Javelin was last year. They didn't take too much time to make it look exactly like it's going to look when we first get to board this ship in Squadron 42. So they still leave that as a wow for us to have when that game comes out. But in the grand scheme of things, it's good to see it here. It's good to get a reference how big this ship is. I'd love to see a king ship. Come on, we know that we could have captured a king ship. You could just have it here and say, here's one of our ill-gotten booties from the war with the, I almost said karate, <laughs> with the Vanduul. It would be amazing if we could do that, just to see how big that giant ship is. But, I mean, this is all I'm going to show you. It's just, it's really nice, but it, it really shouldn't be looked at as it's what we're going to get in the game. Because if we allow people to do that, there'll just be a lot more negative videos on Star Citizen about how they spent all this time and this is all they have. We know they're holding back the real one. These are just placeholders until we actually get to see them in-game. Now, we go back to the inside of the space station. We go to security docking port C, and we get to see the big event of this year's Invictus. Now, it's not exactly what you expect it to be, because I don't think most of you have ever gone on a real Navy ship with a tour. Now, in reality, there'd probably be somebody out here waiting to show a group of people around the ship just to make sure that you didn't go wandering off and wind up hiding in the closet and then jumping out of a cake later on while terrorists try to stick. Never mind. This is not going to be another one of those Steven Seagal movies, but you get my drift. There, there is a lot of a, a lot more that can happen at these events in the future, but currently. It's just walk on by yourself and walk around and see the ship. There are some some sumption events, <laughs> say that five times fast, that do happen as you pass different NPCs. And they do look at you, they do make eye contact with you, and they describe different elements of the ship. As we pass this first gentleman over here, he tries to give you a brief little history and tell you a little bit about the ship. But my first thing was I wanted to jump right into one of the turrets, take a look at it, and then I really quickly found out that I've done this before. I've been in the turret on the Carrick, I've been in the turret on the Constellation, I've been in the turret on the Hammerhead. So it really wasn't any different, but it still felt cool to me to be on the turret in a Javelin because that is amazing. And this ship is actually pretty big. And for the size of the ship, they keep you to a very minute portion of the ship. They do let you go into a couple of spaces that seem like you're going to find something at the bottom of a stairwell. And what you find there is some poor guy getting tortured that you'll see later. But the mess hall, I, I thought it was pretty cool. There'll be a lot of time spent here, evidently. You pass here, the gentleman on the right would be talking to you, telling you about the mess hall. I was more interested in coming back here going... I wonder if they finally have these game machines working, and they don't. There's a rumor that these things will work at some point. You'll be able to play certain games that we've been able to play on the website here in Star Citizen, but don't hold your breath for it because they got to get the game out before they put, start putting games inside of the games. Now, going up the ladder over here, yes, I was in the Navy, so I'm going to call them by the right terminology. Going up the ladder, and I think going towards Starboard... It should be the right side of the ship. You get to go and see the briefing room. Now, the briefing room made you think that you could go see the bridge, too, as you looked at the signs, but you cannot. You have the armory up here on one side and what I think is the bridge on the other, and both of those are locked off to you. What was just happening over there is something that's happened to me many times since I've been in this game, and that's... NPCs keep on blocking the placards that I want to read so I could read the lore that they spent all that time. Now here, you get to hear a brief history of the Warhammer, which I think is pretty awesome. 
They start showing you different cutaways and breakdowns of the ship, show you the armament and all sorts of other cool things. Now this is a brawler. This ship is a brawler. It's not like the Idris, which is kind of an all-round ship that has a hangar deck and could land marines. This ship could land marines too, by the way, but not a lot of them. I mean, they're two different ships, right? So this one, filled with guns, the broadside from this ship is going to be devastating against other ships of equal or smaller size, and it could still do damage to bigger ships if needed. It's pretty awesome. So they tell you everything. I decided to start yelling at this guy because you shouldn't be yawning in the middle of a presentation. It's rude. Well, let's just say... If you do a little bit of digging, you could find different places in the ship that you can go to. There's nothing there. I don't know what these elements are going to be, but right now, there's just no placards, nothing that tells you what they are. So you could find yourself all the way to this really dark area of the ship, which requires that you turn on your light by hitting the T key. Then you come back here, and what do you find but... Something weird going on here. I don't know. Let's... Oh my god, they're torturing that poor... That poor sailor. Oh my god. Anyway. The amount of space that you could investigate in the ship. I'm sure somebody's clipped through a wall or clipped through a bottom of a deck or something. And got to see a lot more of it. I'll be looking for videos that show me that in the near future. But... So far, if, if you're just the average person that comes on the ship, it's mess hall. It's also the birthing compartment, which here they call the barracks, which would be the birthing compartment on the ship, but it's called the barracks. And a little bit of their bathroom. That's it. If you're lucky, you might be able to push one of these NPCs out of the way. I wasn't. I can't read what's there because she won't get out of the way. But it's not the... Oh my god, this is so awesome. You got to see every square inch of the javelin. It's... I got to see a little bit of the javelin. It was pretty amazing. But that's about it. I mean, it, it wasn't... Like, I really want to see more, and I know that CIG is holding that for when we're actually on this ship in Squadron 42. Now, when you first come in, please make note of the time. Set your timer on your phone or something else, because... If you do not, and you're still on the ship when it pulls out of port, you're getting a crime stat. Unless they fixed that already. I don't know if they did or didn't. But I, I'm just wondering, you know, just wondering if there's somebody out there that actually was able to get into more places than what I have been able to find. I'd love to see the bridge. I'd love to see the little small hangar they have for the small ships that they can carry. I'd just like to see more of this ship. And I can't wait until this ship is in the game, even though it's going to take a large org to be able to fly this ship in combat. Everything in Invict this week is kind of that, wow, it's really cool, and meh. And it's that way because there's still a lot of the game to be built, still a lot coming, and many more ships in the future from other huge developers, or I should say shipbuilders, that we don't know about, right? I should say the ships we don't know about. I think we know about most of the, the shipbuilders already. So the, there's a lot to come, but until assumption is done, until we could have a lot more people in one place, until we could have a lot more objects in one place, graphic optimizations, all of that. Invictus Week is going to be, wow, I've been there, I did it. Okay. And one of the big things for me that really puts me off about it is the fact that they have me come back here multiple times. I have to go on Friday, Saturday. I have to go on Sunday, Monday. I got to go on Tuesday, Wednesday, or whatever the days may be. So I have to go every day to see everything. And it's just a waste of my time. Right? I, 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 I just want everything to be there. And I can't wait for that to be the case. Because I wouldn't go to Fleet Week in New York and go on the Intrepid one day to see just McDonnell Douglas jets. And the next day just to see Grumman jets. And the next day just to see Lockheed jets. That's not the way I would do it. 
I would go there and I would see all the stuff at once, right? That's just the way it is. If I, wanna, if I went on the brand new USS Enterprise five years from now when it's christened, I'd see the F-35s, I'd see the F-18s, I'd see the helicopters and whatever replaces the S-3 Viking. I'd see it all, right? And then I'd be done. I wouldn't have to keep going back. I know I'm beating this dead horse. I know this dead horse, the meat's flying everywhere, but I'm done. I'm, I'm done with these events that make me come back daily because I just want to go once and then I want to play the game and then I want to be with my friends. And I hope that's something that the future brings us. Because although these events are great, they're not great to have to go seven days in a row. And don't say I'm lost here. I was looking for a way to clip through a wall and I couldn't find it. Folks, that's my opinion of what's going on here. You have my two cents. I think Invictus is a great thing to attend. I think there's a lot of things that are good. I think there's a lot of things that are meh. But I'd like to know what your opinion is, so please add it in the comments section below. And if you do like this video, please click that thumbs up button because it really does help my channel grow. If you are a subscriber or do subscribe, click that notification icon. It's the one that looks like a bell, so you get notified of all my future videos. Don't forget about my Patreon. If you do want to support the channel, I am back. I'm doing lots of videos over the next few weeks. Some of them won't even be about Star Citizen. And, well, that's about all I could say. With that said, you all be safe out there, and I will talk to you soon.